नमस्कार आई एम नील एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द फिफ्थ वीडियो इन आवर शर्लॉकिंग एनालाइजिंग 2022 प्रीलिम्स पेपर सीरीज बिफोर वी बिगिन फॉर द डे लेट मी जस्ट रीआइटरेट द टू बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स व्हिच लाइ एट द एडिफिस ऑफ शर्लॉकिंग प्रिंसिपल्स दैट वी हैव रीआइटरेटेड अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स ओवर द पास्ट फोर वीडियोस इन प्रीलिम्स यू जस्ट नीड बेसिक नॉलेज एंड common sense to give yourselves the best shot at clearing this examination in this day and age what constitutes basic knowledge i have elaborately talked about it in our first video i will put a link of the video on the top right and you can go have a look if you haven't checked it out yet second pillar is even simpler uh in this examination overview is going to be much more rewarding than in depth knowledge a principle that we have seen at work in a lot of questions and i have no doubt we going to see it work in a lot more questions to follow before we start the discussion of the day which was supposed to happen from question number 41 it has been brought to my notice that i somehow missed the discussion of question 36 in our last video so let us just discuss question 36 uh quickly uh, there's nothing extraordinary in that question it's, it's really simple the principles that we have discussed until now are enough to solve it fairly simply and then we'll move to move on to question number 41 question 36 says consider the following communication text there are three communication texts that are given and then the question wants to know as to which of these are considered short range dividing now look at the directive clearly the directive is short range and this term in itself is slightly vague it has not given a designated range from this to this so that means in questions like these where the directive is slightly vague you should give the benefit of doubt to the options unless you have a strong reason to believe otherwise for instance unless there's a technology in the given options which is outrightly long range you should give the benefit of doubt to the technology and say that you know it is mildly short range so so let's look at the options number 1 is cctv so cctv is actually there are cameras the bundle of cameras which feed the data to the central processing unit which is in the vicinity of the camera so yes it is not long range for sure so makes sense to call it short range number 1 number 2 rfid again we know rfid is short range and number 3 wlan when i was sitting in the examination hall i was in two minds as to whether i should qualify wlan as a short range technology or not but i used the same common sensical dictum uh, of giving the benefit of doubt to the option unless i have strong reason to believe it and with that i backed my hunch i that common sensical hunch and i marked b again turned out to be the right answer so because for me this question didn't come directly from basic source i don't know of a source which has enlisted a table and uh, in the two uh, it in a table format it says that you know these are short range text these are long range text so i am going to use my common sense and my general overarching understanding of you know how the world works that we uh, you know that we have read so far uh, in schools and colleges and during the upsc prep and that knowledge is sufficing to solve questions like this so let's let's jump to the main course for the day let's cut to the chase let's start with question number 41 so question number 41 says climate action tracker i haven't heard of this name when i was in the examination all i didn't uh, i didn't recognize like this and i because i haven't heard it in the first place and it says which monitors the emission reduction pledges of different countries is it so is it a database created by coalition of research orgs is it a wing of ipcc is it a committee under unf triple c or is it an agency promoted and financed by unep plus world bank right abhi there's this you know colloquial term in hindi and i think uh, that would can be my feeling you know much better uh, when i was in the examination hall mujhe hawa nahi thi question ki i didn't know the which is the most appropriate answer and then suddenly in the i think when i came back to this question in the second iteration suddenly i had this insight 
which helped me get to the right answer which was to not really pay attention to the content but to the context again which traces back to the dictum that we keep talking about either the question has come out from a song, from from a basic source or it is a logical reasoning question since this question hasn't come from a basic source in my eyes this is a logical reasoning question until in my in my first iteration when i was going through the questions i was paying attention to the content content is climate action coalition of research groups ipcc unf triple c unf plus world bank and content in this question is not enough to enough for you to prefer one option over the other and then suddenly once i got the insight of focusing on the context the context for me in this question is tracker so then the question now becomes what is more likely to be related to a tracker is it a database is it a wing is it a committee or is it an agency and the moment i had that insight i quickly came to the realization that a tracker is more likely to be related to a database than uh, a wing a committee and agency and i backed that hunch why because i have a high risk appetite number one number two i am completely confident of the fact that either a question has come from a basic source or if not it is a logical reasoning question and uh, risky as it sounded in the moment i marked a again turned out to be the right answer and for me at this point in time i don't think it is uh, a mere coincidence that i have been getting a lot of questions right uh, even in previous questions and uh, even in the examination hall and the answer is fairly simple as to how i have been able to do it the intuition that i have developed by analyzing previous questions you know is so strong because it is based on focusing on basic sources and believing that if the question has not come from a basic source it's a logical reasoning question and you can solve it based on the hints that are given in the question itself i think that's an appetizing start let's come to question 42 so question 42 so the directive is correct i will circle it so that i don't you know mark the incorrect options so the question says climate group is an international non profit or the bad guys climate action by building large networks and it okay, sounds generic i haven't heard of it i don't have a strong reason to negate it and we'll go to the next statement so the next statement is the international energy agency in partnership with climate group launched a global initiative ep100 now this is a dictum i have spoken about in the first session uh, in which based on previous question and analysis combination of these two organizations combination of any two world organizations is more often than not incorrect that is wrong this heuristic did fail in our first session but i know it was the off case of you know 1 in 10 that it failed and still i'm going to back my hunch like crazy i'm going to back that heuristic like crazy even if it has failed once i know that for the next nine instances it's going to work so in all likelihood in my eyes this statement should be incorrect i look at the options the moment i eliminate two i arrive at b but i never mark an mark an option without reading through all the statements so i'm going to hold you know all likelihood in my eyes the answer is b but i'll still go through all the statements statement 3 is ep100 brings together leading companies committed to driving innovation and increasing competitive again sounds like a generic statements just like statement number 1 i don't have a strong enough reason to negate it statement 4 is some indian companies are members again it's a it's a loose statement it's a soft statement if the statement were um, let's say ep 100 is constituted of exclusively indian companies then it gets an extreme extremish connotation and in that case i would eliminate it again this is soft and i have no strong reason to negate it five iea is the secretariat of under two coalition now under two coalition is a repeated theme this has featured i think even in 2021 it has come it has also come a couple of times before and this is related to climate change to ensure that the temperatures don't rise beyond 2 degree celsius from the pre industrial levels from the pre industrial times and for an energy agency to be secretariat is less likely and that also corroborates with our finding that you know now likelihood b is the right answer so i get two or three strong reasons as to why b is the right answer one three and four are generic statements i don't have a strong reason to negate them statement number 2 has combination of two 
organizations most likely to be incorrect and five i know contextually because i have read about under two coalition because it is a it is a rigid thing and i know that an energy agency is less likely to be the secretariat for uh for an organization like under two and i marked b again turned out to be the right answer yeah go to the next question again with question like these you just need to apply your common sense to knowledge it says if rain forest in tropical are the lungs of the earth as surely wetlands function as its kidneys this entire question is pivoted around the understanding of what is the exact job of kidneys in a human body so i knew i mean the only understanding i had about the role of kidneys in the examination hall was the was, was the fact that kidneys eliminate toxins that is all i knew and then i tried to find out as to which statement um, has a correlation with the elimination of toxins so a is the water cycle in wetlands involves surface runoff i don't think there is any contextual uh, call back to toxins or elimination of toxins b says algae form the nutrient base again it uh, speaks about the fact that wetlands are habitat for uh, these fishes crustaceans mollusks less likely uh, in my eyes doesn't speak about the elimination of toxins C says wetlands play a vital role in maintaining sedimentation balance and soil stabilization. Again, I'm not convinced because I don't see that callback um, about elimination of toxins. And finally, it says aquatic plants absorb heavy metals and excess nutrients. Of course, it is not directly talking about elimination of toxins, but absorption is close to elimination in my eyes. And heavy metals and excess nutrients are toxins to the uh, to the ecosystem. and out of all all of these four options d was the most likely of course i was not 100 100% convinced with d either but when i compared d with a b or c d sounded most related to the elimination of toxins so i marked d again turned out to be the right answer and i don't think you will ever come to a, a point wherein you would have read questions like 41 42 43 in a compilation you will have to apply your contextual knowledge you will have to apply tangential knowledge and be confident that if this question has not come from a standard source logical reasoning will you know take you to places let's come to question number 44 now this question is this is a sum cost i got a negative in this if i were to attempt this again i will i will very happily take a negative again because i don't prepare for uh, you know bounces this is another bouncer i think we have seen two bouncers so far this is the third bouncer and i don't mind getting it negative you know getting a negative in this question again <clears throat> so so statement one says 24 hour mean of pm 2.5 should not exceed 15 microgram per meter cube and annual mean of pm 2.5 should not exceed now this has three data points 24 hour 15 microgram upsc you know again not even 9 out of 10 times i mean 19 out of 20 times gives incorrect data points and then i got fairly confident you know if i eliminate one i arrive at c but uh, i was not confident because i never mark an answer before going through the rest of the statements so i was convinced that now likely hook c is the answer but i'll still uh, go through the other options so let's look at two who said in a year the highest level of ozone during the periods of inclement weather now i I do not know what inclement means. One time I went to the Hindi version too, and it says ozone production के उच्चतम स्तर प्रति कूल मौसम अगेन ये हिंदी भी नहीं मुझे समझ में I didn't understand the Hindi version either, so I just skipped the statement. I focused on number three. Number three says PM ten can penetrate the lung barrier and enter the bloodstream. Again, this is a. I mean, can is speaking about likelihood. so i didn't find a strong enough reason to negate three i did have a counter argument about negating three in the examination hall uh, because i knew that pm10 particles are you know bigger than pm2.5 particles and uh, there is a small possibility that maybe they are they are too big to pass through that barrier but for me one was more likely to be incorrect than three as i have spoken about even in the past prelims is a game of possibility and probability at this time because if the question is coming from a standard source then to you can be you know either 100% sure that this is the answer or 
you know you know that you know i miss this chapter and that is why i am not able to get to the right answer the moment the commission or you know whosoever is setting the paper goes outside the bounds of those standard sources it is all a matter of probability and possibility because you cannot read uh you know these topics before coming into the examination hall for me it's not a feasible strategy so three i had uh, i had an element of doubt about three because i knew pm 10 are bigger particles than 2.5 i know uh, i know for a fact that 2.5 can cross the lung barrier but when i compare three with one uh, you know one is more likely to be incorrect based on previous question analysis and again four was very generic excessive ozone can trigger asthma okay i mean of course why not so i marked c and i took a negative i think answer is b right answer is b and uh, i don't think i could have gotten it correct in the examination hall so the answer actually is b i marked c i am happy to take a negative but it is really important to talk about the mindset and the tools that one could use to think about questions like these uh because in the end uh, if you have the right tools and if you practice enough you get yourself the best shot at clearing the exam guarantee to i would keep reiterating aaj ke time pe even kisi bhi time pe kisi bhi competitive exam mein guarantee nahi hoti kisi bhi cheez ki and in an examination like upsc where uh, civil services where the competition is so vast so but it's all a matter of giving yourself the best shot all right so question number 45 again another topic i mean i didn't read it कहा ही पड़ेंगे चीजें तो विच रेफरेंस टू यू नो गुच्ची मशरूम गुच्छी टू गुच्छी समटाइम्स मैं इन द न्यूज कंसिडर दी फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स सो द्री स्टेटमेंट्स नाउ एज सुन एज लुक एप्शन आई रियलाइज देर इज नो ऑप्शन मिस एज ऑल ऑफ दी तो एटलीस्ट वन ऑफ द गिवन ऑप्शन हैज टू बी इन करेक्ट सो आई हैव टू फाइंड द वन विच इज मोस्ट लाइक टू बी इन करेक्ट or a statement which is most easily manipulatable so it says one it is a fungus of course why not could also be something other than a fungus but you know let me read through the other statements first who says it grows in some himalayan forest areas again qualified some is vague and i don't have a strong enough reason to uh, to negate it because if it, if it said that it grows exclusively in himalayan forest areas or it grows entirely in himalayan forest areas or it grows in all the in in the entirety of the himalayan forest areas then i would have been skeptical of an option like this but right now i don't have a strong enough reason to negate this either three says it is commercially cultivated in the himalayan foothills of north eastern india so here i find two facts which could be easily you know manipulatable the first is about commercial cultivation and the other is the the very specific area that it has mentioned north eastern indian commercially cultivated and since all of the above is not uh, is not there in the option facts in three can be most easily manipulated maybe it is not commercially cultivated maybe it grows in the foothills of north eastern india or maybe it is commercially cultivated but not in the north eastern india so when somebody is setting in the exam setting sending a question like this which statement of these three is most easily manipulatable for me it is number 3 and so i eliminate three the options that remain are a and c so i don't even have to think about one at all because you know one is there in both the options and uh, two was a soft statement two is it grows in some himalayan so again i bagged my hunch uh, i marked c i think i think in all possibility i think this is the right answer So, so, so you're seeing, right? How have I been able to clear IFOS cutoff this year, and you know why I've gotten confident uh, in this uh, in the first year of this examination, which is the preliminary examination, is because I've exhaustively analyzed previous questions, and these heuristics that I keep talking about have only been uh, have only been uh, you know realized by the analysis of previous questions. Come to question number forty-six. So it's it is talking about PET. PET as a theme has been repeated a lot of times. The use of which is so widespread in our daily lives. Consider the following statements: Right, its fibers can be blended with glue to reinforce. Of course, why not? Again, can talking about possibility and a generic statement. Why not? And again, you know, if you look at the options, there is no option that says all of the above. So at least two, and exactly two of the given statements are incorrect. Question two, statement two says. 
containers made of it can be used to store any alcoholic beverage now this is a point of contention maybe you know it can hold some alcoholic beverages but not all but not some others so i will very confidently eliminate two the moment i eliminate two b and d stand eliminated now look at statement number c statement number 3 Three says bottles made of it can be recycled into other products. Again, it's talking about a possibility, and sounds like a generic statement. Of course, why not? And four is articles can be easily disposed by incineration without causing greenhouse emissions. Again, this is an extreme. It's a statement with extreme connotation. So maybe it could be disposed, but not easily, or maybe it could be easily disposed by incineration, but it causes greenhouse gas emissions. so four also has a has an extremish connotation number one and number two four has elements which can be easily manipulated so i would eliminate four also and which brings me to option number a my belief that a is the correct answer in the examination hall is further reinforced by the fact that one and three are generic proof So again, I think all the six questions that we have solved until now for me were logical reasoning questions. You will never come to a source which will give you, in its exactness, the same statements that have been given. Question number forty-seven. Question number forty-seven says, "Which of the following is not a bird?" This was a very simple, easy question. Golden mahseer has been in use in the past two, three, even four years. I think I've been reading about mahseer since twenty nineteen. So very so. Very, even when upsc is going to current affairs to ask questions it is asking very easy questions very easy questions and and themes which have been in use since last 3 4 years so so be simple because golden mahseer i think is a it's a, it's a fish for sure i think it is found in kaveri and uh, you arrive to the answer directly otherwise i mean i don't think it is possible to eliminate options of course uh, or, or depends on your interest in ornithology like i knew for a fact that white ibis is a bird and spoonbill is a bird so even if i uh, were not exactly aware of golden mahseer being a fish i could have still eliminated c or d but i think i think this is no excuse for you to not know about golden mahseer this was a news since 2 3 years and you know i think that extent that coverage of current affairs should be there in your preparation Or question number forty-eight. Another another beautiful question. It was fun solving this in the examination hall. Uh, let me close this. So this question is: Which of the following are nitrogen fixing plants? Select the correct answer. Correct is correct. Alpha, alpha, amaranth, chickpea, clover, parsley, and spinach. The only option I was sure of was was chickpea. I think chickpea is chana. Three chickpea. Right, chickpea is chana. So I knew that chickpea is a nitrogen fixing plant. I think maybe I think I must have read it sometime when I was young, sometime when I I think I might have been in school or maybe in Shankar. I don't exactly remember where I picked up this uh, information from, but I I was sure that in all possibility, chana chickpea is is a nitrogen fixing plant. So I eliminate options which do not have three. So. One three four, one three five six. This does not have three. This does not have three. So I eliminate uh, C or D fairly confidently. Now, so so option A and B have one, three, one three is common. A has four, five, and six. So the question now becomes a competition between you know whether four is correct or both five and six are correct. Four is clover, and five and six kulfa and spinach. now i had arrived to into a 50 50 situation i had to attempt it i was not confident about either of these these three so i played with probability again when i have to attempt a question in the blind and i will have to question i have to attempt this question in the blind because i have arrived at 50 50 with confidence i know for a fact that the answer guaranteed is one between a and b i would prefer marking a over b i also marked in the examination hall a over b because in a this is my mindset this is my approach you know you can have a difference of opinion with it i know probabilistically for four to be correct you know there's a 50 50 possibility you know maybe clover is a nitrogen fixing plant 
or it is not nitrogen fixing plant. So when I don't have the content, probability tells me that I have 50% chances of getting of, of clover being a nitrogen fixing plant. On the other hand, there's a combination of two. So maybe, you know, Kulfa is a nitrogen fixing plant and spinach is not. Or maybe, you know, Kulfa, <laughs> Kulfa is not a nitrogen fixing plant and spinach is. Or maybe neither of these are nitrogen fixing plants. There is only one in four possibility that both are nitrogen fixing. This probability fails when you have the knowledge, of course. But, you know, when I am sitting in the examination hall and I don't have the content, enough content to make that resolution, I, I prefer marking an option which has less number of constituents. And that is why I preferred A. Over B, I was lucky. There is no doubt. In UPSC past year, they, I, I found a 70-30 ratio. 70% of the times, you know, an option like this is the answer. 30% of the times, an option like this is the answer. Uh, so, I mean, you know, take your pick appropriately. Uh, but I mean, this is for sure. I mean, once you've arrived into a 50-50 situation, I think it becomes absolutely necessary to attend the question. Question number 49. Again, needle lateral logic, bio rock technology is talked about, which is the following. Bio rock, bio means biological plus rock. Let's see, let's look at the options. So restoration of damaged coral reefs makes sense. I think this could be the answer because related to biological rock. B, development of building materials using plant residues could also be, be, be the answer. C, identification of areas for exploration, extraction of shale gas. I couldn't think of a reason why, you know, bio rock would be related to identification of areas for exploration, extraction. So I would eliminate, you know, C with confidence. I don't see the directives of biological rock. D is providing providing salt lists for wild animals in a forest protected area. Again, too obscure an option to be the correct answer. So again, uh, this has come from my analysis of the previous questions that UPSC with, while forming options usually, you know, talks about themes or, or the themes on which the question comes are themes which are mentioned in the syllabus directly more often than not, at least, you know, 80 to 90% of the times. They talk, they ask questions on themes which are mentioned in the syllabus. And when I look at the four options, again, uh, maybe I was leaning towards A already. So maybe it was confirmation bias for me, but I was getting this hunch that, you know, damaged coral reefs is a topic which is oft repeated in UPSC previous question theme. So if I have to pick between A and B, I think A is more likely to be correct. And Again, at the cost of sounding, uh, you know, like a broken record, maybe some of the heuristics that I talk about might sound too tangential for you at this point. But I can assure you 100% with 100% guarantee. They won't sound too obscure or too literal or too tangential once you observe this pattern from 2011 to 2022. So I was very confident when I marked A. Why? Because for one, uh, word association related the state the, the you know given keyword with the option number a and a is a theme which is featured which is which is featured uh intermittently in previous questions so that is why mark day turned out to be the correct answer let's come to the final question of the day 50 it says the miyawaki method is well known for again similar to this question 47 this is an off repeated theme has been in current affairs since I think three or four years. I've been reading this, this since three or four years. Very simple, directly creation of, I mean, in questions like these, you should not even care for elimination. You should not even care, of, care about reading through other options. Um, creation of mini forest in urban areas unambiguously. Uh, now also, you know, this, this theme I've spoken about, speaking about, spoken about how the examiner only has the right answer. And then examiner has to make three incorrect options, which is really difficult. So you can observe that, you know, the, the dilemma examiner find, found themselves in when you look at the options. You look at the options. One is promotion of commercial farming. B was gardens, mini forest, and coastal areas. This is outrightly wrong. So examiner only had the correct option, which is number C. Option number B, they included the keyword garden to confuse you. And in option number A, they included the keyword farming to confuse you. So that is for someone who's not entirely confident, would, uh, you know, could get confused between A, B, and C. So I think so. So even questions that I directly get 
correct i also thoroughly analyze them to reinforce the themes or reinforce the key heuristics that i keep talking about you you could also see it working here in a question like this so i think that is it for this session we have uh, been able to finish the first 50 questions yes it has taken us a lot, lot of time but uh, you know to deliver quality i also have to analyze them again i also have to make sure that i give enough time to each question that has to be discussed and it's a moral imperative on my part to also talk about the counter arguments uh, you know to my own approach so it becomes a socratic dialogue of sorts so that you have all the tools at your disposal you have all the wherewithals to handle these questions uh, in the best possible manner in the examination hall but also at the same time you should be aware that the only way to you know get a question uh, correct with 100% certainty is to actually you know read that theme in advance but as you could see uh, we have to do a lot of guesswork because nowadays the commission has gone beyond the scope of those standard sources and attempting you know questions with heuristics uh, becomes necessary i think uh, the whole idea of starting this series is to give everyone those tools that could enable you to arrive at the right answer or to give, get you the best shot at arriving at the right answer uh, that is it um, i'm also on the side working on a three side series like this uh, hopefully before the end of the year we be able to finish both of these and then we'll see you know how to go for from there i have no doubt you know the video uh, has added value to your preparation if you have any feedback you know feel free to uh, make your opinion heard in the comment box and uh, you know i shall see you in the next video take care bye